The Collegiate News is brought to you in part by Campus Recreation and Intramural Sports. The Career Services Office will host a graduate and professional schools fair from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. October 21st in the Student Union Grand Salon. Graduate and professional schools from all over Texas and several national organizations will provide information to potential candidates, including admission requirements, graduate degree programs, internships, research opportunities, housing, and cost of living. For more information, call Career Services at 956-882-5627. Student Health Services providing free, anonymous, and confidential HIV testing every Friday, starting September 2nd. Make your appointment today. UTB will participate in National Collegiate Alcohol Awareness Week to help prevent alcohol abuse and impaired driving. Outreach tables will be set up from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Tuesday on the Paseo by Cortez Hall. Students will be provided information on the impact of alcohol abuse by the Dean of Students Office and other local agencies. And on Friday at 7 p.m., Casa Bella will host a beach party to demonstrate a party-smart, alcohol-free environment. Hey guys, welcome to another edition of the Collegian News. I'm Elisa Ramirez. And I'm Arlene Rodriguez. Beginning Tuesday, students will have to decide whether they are UTB or TSC students, university officials say. Students logging into the online registration process known as Scorpion Online will see screens prompting them to decide whether their degree goal and level of college readiness will fall under UTB or TSC. Also, the choices will go into effect for the spring 2012 semester. UTB will have bachelor's, master's, and doctorate degrees and will require that students be college ready for courses. TSC will have developmental programs, certificates, and associate degrees. TSC will not announce until February what one-year and two-year degree programs will be offered. The SGA will buy two Scorpion leadership rings now that the Senate rejected a veto by its president. Stephanie Mendes has a story. In a 19-5 vote, last Tuesday, the SGA overrode President Arturo Guerra's veto of a resolution authorizing the purchase of graduation rings for two outstanding students. After hearing from some senators that um, were not for the resolution, I decided to veto it, not because I want to end the tradition, but because I think they have a point, which is a high price for the rings. Um, So I ask you all to re reconsider like, the amount of money that is being spent in these rooms. Um, there, there are a lot more things that we could do with 1200 bucks, such as a big event for all the students on campus. Or, I don't know, there are only forms of recognition for the students. Yareli Iglesias, Senator for the College of Biomedical Sciences and Health Professions, defended the purchase. Last meeting I heard the word outrageous. Um, most of us aren't aware, since we're new senators, that the president gets to pay $5,400 for his decision uh, for a year, every year. So if we get that amount of money and we divide it by 600, which is the amount uh, that the ring costs, we can get nine rings. So why isn't that outrageous? We've been working hard, bringing this school's name up high, and well, we're not giving, we're not going to give them anything just because this amount is outrageous when it's only $600 compared to compared to 5400 and that's part of our budget. If the president wasn't getting that amount of money, and well, the vice president of Walsh didn't pay for that, but I believe they do deserve it, um, we would have a budget of 26167 compared to without the money they get paid, if we have like $12,087. So that's a big amount to compare to. We're not getting a big budget. It's a long one. You shouldn't have any problems as far as money is concerned. Now, you also have to look at one another thing. Uh, student Affairs takes care of SGA. If we, at some point, need additional funds, stuff like that, we can apply for additional funds. Really, money is not a really big concern here. Uh, tradition is a big concern. Keep it done with the money. It's, it's way too much. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's just a rain. 
there's no need to spend more than a hundred dollars in both of them. There's many, many other things we can do. We can give thousands of books away uh, that we can encourage other students to study. Former SGA President Jorge Munoz spoke in favor of the purchase of the rings. Uh, simple things as a certificate. Why do you do that? Because it means something. And besides the $900 that the ring costs, uh, it doesn't mean that to me. Every time I look at it, it signifies what I am. Uh, if you notice, I wear a scorpion on my necklace. Not because I'm a Scorpio, but because I'm a UTB student, and I'm proud of who I am. And this right here signifies the same thing to me. And for you to cut that opportunity from another student, is it right or wrong, it's up to you. The debate ended when the Senate voted 19 to 5 to override the veto. For the Collegian News, I'm Stephanie Mendes. Hundreds of students gathered to hear a Pulitzer Prize winner speak about civil rights last Thursday in the Jacob Brown Auditorium. Francisco Garza was there. Award-winning historian David M. Oshinsky recounted a story about second chances as part of the Distinguished Lecture Series. He told the students that when he was a student at Cornell University in 1964, he had the opportunity to go to Mississippi to register African-American voters in what was called the Summer of Freedom. But fear of the Ku Klux Klan's brutality to those who tried to register voters prevented him from going. Thirty years later, he had the opportunity to investigate the murders of three civil rights workers who had gone to Mississippi in 1964. The New York Times asked me whether I would go down to Mississippi to look at these files and to see whether I could find out anything about Schwer and Cheney and Good, anything at all, that might help to reopen this case. So I, I jumped at the idea, having flunked it the first time around, and I actually brought my son with me, who is not much older than you are. I, mean, I thought it would be a great bonding experience that we both go down to Mississippi and see what we can do. So if I take a look at the files, my son is with me, we go through the files, and one thing is clear. There was a lot of interesting information in there about the killings, and all of the roads lead to preacher Edgar Ray killing as the guy who set up the murders. Oshinsky managed to get not only an interview with Killen, but a dinner invitation. Now, I was with my teenage son. I was with a female photographer from the New York Times. I really wanted to do this story. I did not have, this was the era before cell phones. So I followed the preacher in my car up to his farm. And we began going further and further into the mountains. And then my heart sinks as we turn off on the Rock Cut Road, which is exactly the road where the three civil rights workers had been murdered. The preacher lives on that road. After dinner and an interview, Oshinsky returned to New York, wrote the article, and five years later, Kellen was convicted of the murders. So in my life, that hurt, that feeling of cowardice on my part for not doing what I should have done in 1964 as someone just a little bit older than you, <clears throat> has to some degree dissipated. And that is the lesson I want to leave you with. For the Collegian News, I'm Francisco Garza. Valley Metro is proposing a new flexible route in Cameron County that would make a stop at UTB TSC. My co-anchor Marlene Rodriguez attended the hearing. Valley Metro has proposed a new bus route that would connect Harlingen, San Benito, Los Fresnos, and Brownsville starting in January 2012. For only $1.50, students would be able to ride the bus to four different cities in the valley. Proposed route. And uh, right now we're going through public uh, input. Basically, before we finalize the alignment and the timetable, we want to get the uh, public input uh, to make sure that it meets the, the needs of uh, everyone. Valley Metro is operated by the Lower Rio Grande Development Council. The proposed stop locations include UTB TSC, the City of Brownsville Multimodal Terminal, Downtown Brownsville, Texas State Technical College, 
the Harlingen VTC station, downtown Harlingen, downtown San Benito, San Benito City Hall, Los Fresnos High School, Los Fresnos City Hall, and Los Fresnos Memorial Park. Our goals, our goals are to uh, continue to expand public transportation across the valley to make that connection like we said before. We want to have seamless transportation to give uh, people an opportunity to uh, travel throughout the valley without having to have a car. This was the fourth and final public hearing on the proposal. Rodney Gomez, Program Administrator for Valley Metro, said officials are working on having a design that can be associated with the bus. We're working, I guess, with uh, Veronica Mendez and, and uh, your own marketing uh, department as well to sort of uh, create a nice design and slogan. We're going to wrap uh, the bus as well uh, so that it's, you know, it's eye-catching, something that people will be able to associate with, uh, with our bus service. The proposal will be confirmed in December 2011. For the Collision News, I'm Marlene Rodriguez. More than 400 people watched 21 acts compete in the Noche de Estrellas talent show. Stephanie Mendez fills us in. Two singers and a guitarist took the top prizes of UTV TSC's Noche de Estrellas student talent show held October 7 in the Set B lecture hall. Nestor Trevino, a senior public service and government major, won first place in a $300 cash prize after Singing Without You by Keith Urban. The audience cheered and applauded Trevino during and after his performance of the country song. I love you since the very first day. Major Jose Villarreal and his electric guitar delighted the ears of the crowd when he performed Tender Surrender by Steve Bay. Villarreal won second place in $150. <laughs> cheered and applauded freshman Elizabeth Lizzie Martinez even before she was done singing I Will Always Love You by Whitney Houston from the blockbuster movie The Bodyguard. Martinez won third place and $50. with this week's What's Your Beef? What issue do you have on campus right now? Um, well, the restrooms in the North Building are kind of dirty, especially in the second floor. 
So maybe if you could get some more people to clean that up more frequently, because it's a restroom that gets a lot of use. There's no accessible food, or like all the food on campus is really expensive. And it's like impossible to eat lunch or anything for less than five bucks, because you know, without going to Burger King or the gas station to grab a taco or something. What issue do you have with campus right now? Um, we need to upgrade the laptops that we were use that we're using right now, because the ones that we have are like from a decade ago, and they're really old, and we can't really use them. It takes more time, and then, uh, we can't have mu much time with the midterms right now going on in math. So. It's, it's really hard to use them, and we think we should upgrade them. Dozens of people peered through the telescopes of UTB TSC Observatory. Alexander Garcia tells us what they saw. Nopu Bueno Observatory opened its doors last Saturday for World Space Week. Jessica Rivera, a sophomore engineering major, was one of the two volunteers for the October 8th event. Uh, I came to volunteer with the telescopes here so we could look at uh, the sun and the moon with, through a telescope. Senior biology major Rocio Rangel enjoyed the tour because she is interested in the universe. I think it's interesting to see what else is in our, well, not planet, in our universe, because there's more than, than us. Although she began working at the observatory last fall, astrophysics graduate student Samantha Fuentes Tapia fell in love with astronomy when she was about six years old. I think ever since I remember, <laughs> yeah. I remember being like six years old or maybe five and going out my backyard with my parents and looking at the um, at the stars falling like when there was a meteor shower, things like that. I always liked the topic actually. The Nompu Wano Observatory gives tours every Friday. If you want to schedule a group visit, call the Center for Gravitational Wave Astronomy at 882-6678. For the Collegian News, this is Alexandra Gracia. Here's Marlene Rodriguez with this month's Professor Spotlight. Hi, welcome to Professor Spotlight. I'm here at Spanish Language and Literature Professor Cheryl Phelps. Cheryl, what do you want students to get out of your class? Well, it would depend really on the level of class that I'm teaching. And uh, I have some overall goals, but for example, if I were teaching the lower division classes, then basically they are language classes where you're learning the basic skills. Cheryl Phelps also is the Assistant Dean of the College of Liberal Arts. She has a bachelor's degree in Spanish and English and a master's degree in Spanish and French from the University of North Texas, plus an additional 30 hours of graduate study. She teaches upper and lower division courses in Spanish language and literature. My upper division, uh, I teach mainly the uh, first half of Latin American literature, and what I want the students to see there is uh, the transition of literature from uh, literature that basically was imitating European models to a literature that really took on an American flavor. Besides teaching, Phelps has an interest in Puerto Rican literature and the Latin American film industry. She also enjoys travel and gardening. personal level, I like travel and gardening, not necessarily in that order at times, and uh, I enjoy both of those because they, they stimulate me and the gardening particularly is good therapy. Phelps has taught her whole professional life, including when she directed an ESL program in Michigan for two years. Phelps said some of the local churches where she was living teamed up with the local school district to provide ESL courses to refugee families from Cambodia. They uh, hired me to direct this program, but because it was huge, I mean it was a huge undertaking because there were so many families, we ended up with 120 volunteers that would cycle through that program weekly, teaching the different levels, the different classes, and it was my responsibility to train them. Phelps said many students asked why she teaches Spanish. The professor said she was raised in a Hispanic environment. Phelps was nine years old when she and her family moved to Puerto Rico. She said the struggle to communicate moved her to learn the language. For the Collegian News, I'm Arley Rodriguez. Here's Alejandro Rivera with Scorpion Sports. The women's soccer team will observe Parents Weekend at home this week, playing at 5 p.m. Thursday against Louisiana State University Shreveport before meeting Northwood University at 1 p.m. Saturday. The Scorpions defeated Austin Huston Tillotson University 9-0 last Thursday to improve their overall record to 10-2-1 and 5-0 and in conference, tying them for first place with Our Lady of the Lake University. The attack was led by forwards Laura Luis and Verena Wonsikowski, who each scored two goals. 
On October 11th, the team met Laredo's Texas A&M International University on Scorpion soccer field and defeated the Dust Devils 5-2. The Scorpions scored all five goals in the first half of the game. October 8th, the Scorpions played their most lopsided game so far, dominating Bacon College 11-0. The offensive explosion was led by forward Samantha Garcia's three goals. The men's soccer team returns home to face Shreveport's Louisiana State University at 7 p.m. Thursday, followed by a match against Northwood University at 3 p.m. Saturday. The team fell to Huston Tillotson University in Austin last Thursday. The 3-1 final was the first loss for the men in nine games. As of press time, the Scorpions' record is 7-4-2. They have a 5-1-1 record in conference. On October 8th, the men defeated Bacone College 5-1 at Scorpion Soccer Field. The attack was led by forward Mario Perez's two goals. Perez received the Red River Athletic Conference Soccer Co-Offensive Player of the Week honor for his play in the week of October 3rd through the 9th. UTBTSC women's volleyball team looks to continue its march to the playoffs, coming home for two matches. The Scorpions will face Houston's University of St. Thomas at 7 p.m. Friday before playing Austin's Huston Tillotson University at 1 p.m. Sunday. At home on October 7th, the women make quick work of New Mexico's University of the Southwest by scores of 25-17, 25-3, and 25-7. The decisive victory marked the 300th win of athletics director and head coach Todd Lowry's career. He was presented with a plaque to commemorate the achievement in the sport. Number 301 came the following day as the Scorpions handled Bacone College in three sets, 25-13, 25-20, and 25-9. The Scorpions continue to be the unanimous number one ranked team in the 2011 Tachikara NAIA Volleyball Coaches Top 25 poll. The UTBTSC men's golf team could not recover from a slow start at the Harold Funston Invitational hosted by Sam Houston State University October 10th through the 11th in Huntsville. The Scorpions finished 11th in a field of 12 teams with scores of 309 in the first round and 311 in the second for a total score of 620, according to the UTBTSC's athletics website. Senior Anthony Milligan led the team with a combined score of 151, shooting a 77 in the first round and improving to a 74 in the second. The men will hit the links again October 25th to participate in the Northwood Fall Shootout hosted by Northwood University in Grand Perry. That's it for the Collegian News. We now leave you with footage from Noche de Estrellas. Thank you for joining us and tune in next time. I'm Arlene Rodriguez. And I'm Melissa Ramirez. Have a great day.